You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Hmm. We did that. <laughs> I think they said 90. That's what I heard. <laughs> Lastly, thank you to my dad for teaching me that everyone is entitled to dignity and everyone deserves justice. Thank you to my children for giving me the inspiration to keep getting up and doing this job. In the words of Dr. Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the arc of the moral universe is long but it always bends towards justice. Phyllis is back at it yet again. Here's what she said yesterday in Fulton County. Check it out, bro. Say it ain't so, say it ain't so. D.A. Fanny Willis or Bonnie Willis, how she wants to be called. You got a lot of scrutiny going on right now, man. Listen, we don't know how her career is going to be going forward, but I'll tell you this right now. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, Everyone is reacting to this right now. Everyone got something to say. We see we see through the bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? We see what's going on right now. We are not slow. People are not as dumb as they used to be. Let's just say that. With that being said, we're about to see how they're going to expose her or how she's exposing herself for her personal financial gain. With that being said, if you like reactions like this, consider hitting that like button. Definitely subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell. Let's see how this is about to play out. Others have found ire with the media for not those checking those who unfairly attack African American women. Ah, uh, you see what she's doing now? She's smart. I'm not gonna lie. She's she's an evil smart person. Those are dangerous people, right? She understands what triggers people. Now she's making this a racial issue. She's saying that black women was attacked. They're just attacking whoever's in that position right now. And you happen to be in that seat. And you're the one who's doing the lunacy and the ignorance, right? You're the one who's hosting the clown show. This is your show after all. You understand? So you can miss us with those trigger words. You're going to say they're being anti-Christian, anti-religion, because you know these are the words that trigger people. You know, there's a mass of black people. There's a mass of religious people. So you're really sending out a back call to them in your defense, which I say is pure evil, pure evil. But that same media will jump at the morsel of a chance to tear a sister down. While they over there running their mouth, I'm over here paying them no mind, thriving, like paying mind. ambitious. <laughs> Win. So it's just hilarious how it's always the system is after me, not your inappropriate behaviors that got you in this, not some of your court proceedings and expenditures and whatnot. No, it's the system. It's always very convenient. Also, always remember a man is not a plan. Yeah, that's 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 thank that you. That's, that's how you get banned. That's, if this was a basketball game, it would be a dunk. Let's I know Bonnie Willis took her best bottle of Grey Goose and took some of that undisclosed cash from that undisclosed safe in her undisclosed home and had a time last night when the decision dropped saying that she can stay on the Trump prosecution case. Speaking of which, let's talk about that decision. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm a lawyer, not yours. And let's get into the case. Like that intro right there. For those who's not aware, undisclosed money. That's when she kept saying she don't put money in the bank. She puts it underneath her bed. Something she was taught from her dad. Allegedly. I don't know how true that is, but hey, financially speaking, she has no clue what macroeconomics is. You got to put your money to work. You can't just save it. You understand? There are two main portions of the decision I'd like to discuss. The first titled actual conflict of interest and the second titled appearance of impropriety. Beginning with the conflict of interest, the definition here says a conflict of interest includes acquiring a personal interest or stake in the defendant's conviction. Applying that definition to the present case, defendants argued among other things that Fronnie Willis had a financial interest in prosecuting this case due to her relationship with prosecutor Nathan Wade. The judge then goes through all the expenditures or the trips that the district attorney and the prosecutor went on and finds ultimately that the defendants did not meet their 
their burden to prove that the prosecutor, Fonnie Willis, had a financial gain from this case. Remember, I think a lot of people were confused. The burden here was on the defense to prove that there was a financial gain. The prosecution didn't have to prove anything. Judge says specifically here, the district attorney and Wade testified that the expenditures were not meant as gifts and not designed to benefit the district attorney. Both testified that the district attorney regularly reimbursed Wade in cash. And if not reimbursed, mm -hmm. the district attorney covered a comparable related expense. Again, judge here says it better than I could. Simply put, the defendants have not presented sufficient evidence indicating that the expenses were not roughly divided evenly or that the district attorney was or currently remains greatly or pecuniarily interested in this prosecution. Now, do you see the corruption? Do you understand where the corruption is right now at this point? Let me know in the comments. They can't prove that based on even if the district attorney got $100 or $200 extra, that doesn't demonstrate that she was somehow financially interested in had a financial gain from having a relationship with Nathan Wade and prosecuting the case. Two plus two was not equally four here. The court also wraps up this portion of the argument addressing another part of the financial gain, and that is the argument that Attorney Willis had some sort of interest in prolonging the prosecution, slowing it down, or prosecuting Donald Trump harder because of the financial gain that she allegedly received by having a romantic relationship with Nathan Wade. The judge speaks here about the argument that there is some sort of financial arrangement that created an incentive to prolong the case that the district attorney wanted to make the case last longer. From jump, the district attorney's office said that they wanted this case to be tried within six months of indictment, which you guys is really, really fast. It's not unusual, especially post pandemic, for people to be waiting one plus year, two plus years to have their case get ready for trial. And so for six months to happen, again, that just demonstrates that the district attorney was not trying to prolong or slow down this case. And again, this is an allegation that the defense attorneys threw out there and they just did not have the receipts or any proof to back it up. Even more shenanigans where a yelling match, a shouting match gets in, ensues between uh, Judge Suge Knight Glanville and Brian Steele. And wait till you hear what Brian Steele says. And if you think Cash Money G Fanny Willis is a tornado, <laughs> Miss Love, Miss Love, talk about the irony and paradox there. She almost makes Cash Money G look like a girl stuff. I believe that's the same DA who YSL Woody said, you stank, you're fried, I believe. If I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's her too. Listen to this, this is unbelievable. I would like the um, court to look into the um, appropriateness, Mr. Copeland, to my observations around your courtroom outside your courtroom on breaks is surrounded by several members of law enforcement of the district attorney's office and prosecutors, potentially other persons. I don't know why a sitting witness under oath is in a room with prosecutors during breaks, mornings, afternoons. It's totally inappropriate. There are people who are in your court's door. There's a double door where the court sits to its right that aligns with the witness chair. And I noticed people standing there um, in law enforcement while Mr. Copeland is testifying. He's making eye contact with them. I don't know if they're his brother. My point to you is this, what gives anybody the right to surround a witness, he's not in custody, um, and bring a witness. I'm sure Mr. Copeland didn't say to the prosecutors, I don't know this, Your Honor, so if you think I'm wrong, then just strike it from your memory. But I'm sure he didn't say, hey, you guys want to hang out in this room a little while? So I believe that he is being led on a tether by the prosecutors, and it is coercion. It is inappropriate. And why would anybody not be recording everything he said. And why do I have to get it in drips and drabs? So I am objecting to the, the tactics of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office and whomever else they may have employed with a citizen, regardless of what the court may think of him, or the prosecutors think I don't have any I don't have any thoughts so please don't put put Good. that in put, put, please don't put that in uh, in, in, in the ether okay but that's what you just said sir that's kind of foul if you ask me it seems like the only way of winning is by locking the opposition up if you're doing something right they're gonna make sure they get you locked up in jail thrown away just so that they can win their argument that's what it looked like right now that's happening to Trump 
and in this situation with YSL members. That's what it looks like. Judge is admitting that he had this ex parte communication and it seems like that should be what everyone's focused on, not whether or not Brian is going to tell him who told him the judge had this ex parte. It just seemed like deflecting. You know, the judge was was in trouble, got caught with having this ex parte hearing. And instead of admit to that and handle that, you know, when Brian brought it up, they're going to throw Brian in jail. It just it, it didn't make a lot of sense. But like you said, it's unheard of. Um, these proceedings are supposed to be what we call adversary, where all the defense is there. The defendants, the defense lawyers are all supposed to be present. But instead, they chose to have this meeting without inviting any of the defense, without letting them know. And when they brought that up, the lawyer ends up in custody. The first, what we're doing is we are appealing it. So we're filing an emergency appeal. Thank God we have an emergency process in Georgia to appeal contempt orders. Um, we believe the judge will, the judges of the appellate courts will grant a bond. And so hopefully Brian will not have to spend his weekend in the jail. The worst part though, is this trial is continuing. And so imagine, you know, we don't just work during the hours you see us in court. When we're in court, we are regularly working after hours, we're working at night, we're working on weekends. I have never tried a case where I didn't work all weekend. And so, and Brian is a very good lawyer and he does a lot of work on his cases. So he's definitely working all weekend. You're taking a man from his office where he has computers, Westlaw, internet, all this stuff, access to the case file. And this case file is huge. And putting him in a jail cell where he's none of that. That the trial can't continue. I mean, it's just, it, it boggles my mind that anybody thinks that you could have the lead defense lawyer in custody the entire weekend and this trial continue unhinged. That, that, that defies logic to me. I can tell you as a defense lawyer, nothing will affect your advocacy more than a judge saying if you keep arguing and doing your job, I'm going to lock you up and putting you in handcuffs. Nothing will affect you more. And that's essentially what happened. Brian made an argument. He ended up in handcuffs. He ended up in the Fulton County Jail in the lockup for, you know, an hour or so before the judge let him out. Nothing will stop an advocate in their tracks more than going to jail. I really thought that was a sucker move by the judge right there. The judge, the judge is really biased at this point. Go in the comments and write the word bias if you believe that this judge is being biased. I believe he's being biased. And I think he was the same judge that was involved in the Johnny Depp case as well. Because you can't do your job. And, you know, that that fear has got to be in the back of everybody's mind in that courtroom. Every single defense lawyer. You know, some of them, they may have kids they've got to go home to and they can't go to jail. I mean, you, you think about the things that are going on in their minds. Um, you know, you want to be able to do everything you can for your client, but you can't do that if you're in jail. Luckily in Georgia, when an attorney is subject to incarceration, the appellate courts respond very quickly. And what it's called is a supersedious bond. So essentially they issue a bond that kind of stays everything and says, wait, hold on, we're going to pause this. You're not going to have to go to custody. You get to go and do this appeal. And so it just pauses that while the appeal is pending. If we're successful with the appeal, then Brian never has to go into custody. Obviously, if we lose the appeal, he could still be forced to, to spend weekends in custody, but that would be down the road. That wouldn't be right now. My lawsuit against Fonnie Willis, Vern Arrington, and the Fulton County Ethics Board stems from this necessity. Stalking often misunderstood involves repeated unwanted behavior causing fear or distress. It's a serious issue affecting millions annually. My stalker, aided by Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington, who also served as my stalker's personal attorney. This conflict of interest is alarming as it compromises the very justice system meant to protect victims. Despite presenting numerous witnesses, DA Willis did not interview one single witness. Over 20 were presented, including my pastor after he joined my church. This pattern of neglect and misconduct persisted violating my rights under Marcy's law as she offered a plea deal without consenting me. The passage of the Prosecuting Attorney's Qualification Commission is a vital step towards accountability, providing recourse for citizens failed by the system. Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington chose to take a stalking case against a state representative, all while he oversees and appropriates funds to the DA's office. As a criminal defense attorney, Fulton Commissioner Marvin Arrington defends his clients in the same courtroom he appropriates and has unlimited access to the judges. DA Willis is charged to represent victims in Fulton County, the very people Commissioner Arrington's private clients seek to dismiss claims against. Two attorneys, family friends, law school classmates, opposing each other with one having the authority to chop up charges to benefit the other, and one with the authority to vehemently advocate for funding.
CNN's Brian Todd has more on the fiery speech Fonnie Willis just gave at an Atlanta area church. Yeah, this way she's going to twist everything up right here. This way she start using trigger words. Warning, check this out. A defiant Fulton County District Attorney delivers a message to her detractors. Black women are sick and tired of being sick and tired. During an appearance today at an African Methodist Episcopal Church outside Atlanta, Fonnie Willis talked about what she's gone through since former President Donald Trump tried to get her removed from prosecuting his election subversion case in Georgia, and since Nathan Wade resigned as a prosecutor in the case because of their previous relationship. What can I say? I live the experience of a black woman who is attacked and over-sexualized. Listen, <laughs> Ain't none of that happening to you. Just because they're calling you Fanny, it has nothing to do with your behind, all right? Nothing to do with that. It just rhymes with Fanny Pack, all right? Little pouch, yeah, that's what you actually look like. See, I'm so tired of hearing these idiots call my name as Fanny in a way to attempt to humiliate me. Because like silly schoolboys, the name reminds them of a woman's rear, of her behind. Willis did not mention anyone by name in her speech, but alluded to the moment Trump's former attorney, Rudy Giuliani, made an offensive remark about her at a Michigan church event last week. I've got two prosecutors, Fanny the Ho. <laughs> Willis responded to that this morning. Very anti-Christian behavior celebrated. Do you see what she does, right? anti-christian anti-black just pay attention to the rhetoric you understand she know what she doing she knows exactly what she's doing in fact they cheer celebrate it and laugh loudly this came just hours after cnn's caitlin collins interviewed nathan way a tense moment came with this question when did the re romantic relationship between the two of you start there's been this effort to 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 say that Okay, these these exact dates are 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 at issue, and these exact dates are. I'm getting I'm getting signaled here. A consultant to Wade interrupted the interview. They moved aside and spoke for a few moments. Then Collins resumed. Everything okay? Yeah. Just so what? That was his handler telling him what not to say and how to speak, correcting his wrongs. Y'all, let me know in the comments. To revisit the question it was to clarify when the romantic relationship started and when it ended sure so you know i believe that the the public has um through uh through the testimony and other uh interviews the public has a a, a clear snapshot that this is clearly just a distraction see i'm so tired of hearing these idiots call my name as fanny in a way to attempt to humiliate me. They get mad when I call out their lunacy. I mean, you can't piss on me and tell me it's raining. <laughs> We're not trying to humiliate her. We thought her name was Fanny for six months. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So let's be clear, because you lied in this. This let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here, I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth, Judge. And this it, is, it, it is a lie. Listen, she is a lie, and for her personal financial gains, allegedly, she is lying. You understand? Well, we already know the truth will prevail. The truth will come out, and the truth shall set her free, not into freedom. But behind them bars you understand with that being said if you like reactions like this consider hitting that like button definitely subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell i believe that she needs to go down if you agree go in the comments you already know what to do run it up flood it up see you in the next one